Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna to dissect my old engine to figure out what may have happened. First thing I wanna do is get the engine set up on the engine stand. I'm going to remove the chain tensioner. Removing the bane of solenoids. Taking out the crank pulley. I put the cams at TDC. I'm going to remove these 16 mil bolts. I'll take the cams out. If you guys are just putting things back together with the same hardware, then you would want to probably label these and keep track of where they were positioned. If you're going for a full rebuild, that would change things. I actually got these donated to me by a viewer, which was really nice of them, but they did come off a motor that had spun a bearing, but they looked pretty clean, but they weren't absolutely perfect. There were score marks that you couldn't really feel, but not absolutely perfect. And in retrospect, that could have led to the failure of the bottom end potentially, I'm not too sure, but if I end up rebuilding this motor, I'd have to do new cam chase and put my cams in from my original set, not these cams. So that could just be that these got damaged from the bearing clearance issues, but it could have been a culprit as to why I experienced a failure. Maybe I shouldn't have put in cam trays that had been in a motor that failed because they had the ever so slightest scoring in these journals, but I didn't think it would be enough to do any damage, but that may have been a bad call. You guys let me know in the comments what you think of that. I've already removed the oil pump in a previous video. FYI, that's about how they all look. It's all scored up. I'm gonna lift the bed plate out of the way now. The main bearings seem to have taken a bit of a beating, but they're not shot or anything. They just, they got wear on them. I'm gonna pop the pistons out now. All right, there's the motor disassembled. I'll get cleaned up and get the parts organized so we can take a look at the condition. This is torn down completely now. 
We'll take a look at the cross hatch. We'll take a look at the piston wear and everything. Keep in mind this motor has 200,000 miles on it. So I'll come back once I have my stuff a little bit organized. All right, to start with, that's the block and that's the cross hatch that's remaining on the cylinder bore after close to 200,000 miles. They're all about the same. Here's a good look at the condition of the crankshaft. You can see some scoring, you can't really feel it. That could easily be polished, you would think. All right, there's a shot at the spun bearing. You can see pretty clearly. It's not terrible, but it's not good. It needs to be ground down and polished and maybe oversized bearings, but I think this crankshaft can be easily saved. But either way, that's what the spun bearing looks like, the journal, and there's a regular journal that didn't really get damaged. You can see the difference in sheen. Something interesting about forged crankshafts, even though it's touching a piece of cardboard here, if I were to tap it, it will ring for quite a while. Here's one of the pistons. You can see the coating they put there for the skirt. Still somewhat intact. Pretty good considering the mileage. Wasn't a lot of carbon buildup on the top of the piston. This was a good rod. Bearing didn't spin, it just had some damage. This is the rod that spun. And otherwise it seems fine. I don't see any bends or any issues with the, the rod itself. I don't have any issues with ring lands or anything like that. Here's the bed plate and the main bearings. This has a score in it, but not terrible considering the mileage. They have taken a bit of a beating, but they're still fine. Here's the head gasket. It obviously was still performing fine. It's a really good quality head gasket. Really good quality multi-layer steel head gasket. So this wasn't giving me any issues at all, but just wanted to show it to you on camera. So I had the motor flipped upside down and got some oil in here on the engine stand. But overall, the valves all seem fine. They were seating fine. This head seems completely fine. I don't see any reason why we can't just get this cleaned up and reuse it. Taking another look at this cam tray. It's not terrible, but it's not pretty at the same time. These journals have grooves in them and marks, and I don't think they can be reused. So now I'll pose the question to you guys. What do you think I should do with this engine? Uh, I had a vendor reach out offering me a set of forged H-beam rods to use with this engine uh, if I'm gonna rebuild it. I'm gonna pop those on the screen now. They're called max speeding rods. You know, they're Chinese rods, but they're a major upgrade over factory rods. Um, what do you guys think of them? Would you like to see me use them? You know, they're about 400 and change to your door. It could be a really cost-effective way to build one of these motors. If that was the case, I'd just drop everything off in a machine shop, do oversized bearings on the crankshaft and just get a set of pistons. I don't necessarily want to dump a whole bunch of money into the platform if I got a sponsor like those rods that helps. So at the end of the day, I'm kind of on the fence if I want to build this motor, but I think it would be really good content for you guys. So even if I built the motors, a couple of ways to go about it, either we can plan a giveaway at the end of it, or if you really want to see me put it in my car and run a single turbo, etc., and you guys want to do like a GoFundMe or something to just for the sake of seeing that content, um, that's something to consider. But either way, I wanna know what you guys think of those connecting rods. So I think the cause of the failure was just these bearings and the clearances for whatever reason didn't work out. So this is one of the bearings that didn't spin. So there's a look at one of the bearings that didn't spin, but either way it was beat up. Clearances were too tight or something was off with these King bearings. You know, everything was fine on my motor up to 200,000 miles, but when I put these in, I got the failure shortly thereafter. You know, there had to be something to do with clearancing. There's something that doesn't add up. So for now, I'm just gonna write this off and chalk it up to upgrading to these bearings causing this issue. And if I'm gonna do this again, I'll go with a different brand or maybe even stick to OEM bearings. We'll see, let me guys know what you think about that. I thought it would be interesting for you guys to see the inside of your N54 or your BMW engine to see uh, what they look like and how they're built. That'll conclude this video. In the next video, I'm gonna get my car tested on the dyno to see how much power it's actually making now with the new engine. If this is the first video you're catching on mine, please consider subscribing. I do upload regularly. Thanks for watching.